And we are sons of God. And ladies, you can be a son if I can be the bride. But I want you to know you're more than the child of God. Because Romans 8 talks about us being children of God. And if he said, if you're children of God, you're heirs. And you have full rights to everything your daddy owns. That's what Romans 8 says. But that's technon. That's a word for child. There are three words for babies, infants, children, toddlers in the, in the New Testament. But then you get to the next stage, which is weos, which is a son. And when, when God uses the word weos in Scripture and says we're sons of God, he's not or even adopted as sons. He's not saying to us, you weren't a part of the family, but I adopt you into the family. In the Greek context of the day, adoption was a child already in the family. It, it meant adoption like we know it too. But in biblical terms, it was a child in the family placed into sonship. Huio thesia. The thesia is placing, huios is son. It's the placing of a son. It's what happened to Jesus when he was baptized because in the huio thesia ceremony, the father would gather the village, the city, all that knew the family would gather them and he would lay his hands on the technon and then he would say, this is my beloved huios whom I'm well pleased. That said to the whole community, this child is now entrusted with the authority of the family name. He can run the business. He speaks for me. He has the keys to the safe, the checkbook. When he talks, it's me talking. This is no longer my child. This is my son. That's why God said unto us, a child is born. But a son is given or placed, and that's why, because they all knew this Weothesius ceremony, that's why God out loud when Jesus was baptized and ready to begin his ministry, God's going to launch him into his Weothesia. He speaks from heaven and the whole community hears it. They don't know what it is, but this is my beloved son. And God was saying, he now begins his ministry with my full blessing and authority. And Jesus did not begin his earthly ministry until that Weothesia ceremony took place. But Romans 8 says we are children and we have all the rights of children. But the time comes when we mature into sons and daughters that can be trusted with authority. And Romans 8 says, even though children are heirs and have all the rights and benefits, the sons of God are led by the Spirit of God. And then it says, the earth is groaning and travailing and crying out, not for the children of God. Because the children of God can't heal the earth. And the children of God don't cast out devils and they don't heal the sick and they don't disciple nations and they don't function as the ecclesia. They're not ready yet. They have all the rights and all the privileges and all the blessings and, and they're part of the family and I'm not dissing it in any way. I'm just saying you got to come to the point and when you do come to the point where you step into that mature authority and you know the word and you know your God and you know who he is and you know who you are in him, then he says, I authorize you now to function as one of my sons. You even have have authority to heal the earth. So we're not only children of God, we are sons and daughters. We are sons with authority. Satan doesn't want you to know that. He wants to mock you. He wants to mock you every day. He wants to mock you because your kids aren't walking with him. He wants to mock you because you're struggling in this area, that area. He wants to mock you because of what's happening in the nation. You need to remind him that you're a part of a company of believers, a remnant called the Ecclesia, and you have authority to function in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Because you're not just a child. Your son. So as sons, we have authority to represent Jesus. If you follow me, you know that word means represent. We not only just throw out a few things he says, 
That word means represent, represent the, the Latin term. You take who he is and you present him on the earth. You have authority to represent Jesus as a son of God. Just like he had authority to represent the father, you have authority to represent Jesus. Just like he had the ability to say, when you see me, you see the father. You can say, when you see me, you see Jesus. That's what he wants you to do. And you're going you're gonna to boomerang back on the mocking spirit. We're citizens of the kingdom. We're his voice in the earth. We are the voice of God in the earth. I don't know if you... I, would you go sleep on me? I'm telling you who you are. I'm telling the, the, the demonic hordes in America who we are. We are the voice of God. When we speak for him... And we wield his sword. And when we wield his sword in his name, it cuts. It overthrows. It tears down. It plucks up. It destroys strongholds of darkness. Drives out demons. We are his ecclesia. We bind. We loose. We open and close. We disciple individuals. We disciple nations. We are ambassadors of the kingdom of heaven. We are the mighty men and women. That's who we are. We are his life givers. We dispense his life. We speak for him and announce the gospel. And when we announce the good news of the gospel, power goes forth and literally lives are transformed. People are born again. The power of God invades the atmosphere. Strongholds over communities are broken. Lives are changed. Marriages are healed. Because we have power when we speak the gospel. We are healers. There's healing in your hands. There's healing in your mouth. We are deliverers. We cast out demons. We turn the other cheek when we deal with our enemies. But as we turn the other cheek to those who persecute us, then we cast out demons. We are teachers of truth. We are disciplers. We are the voice of truth in the earth. We are not weak. We are not deceived. We are not timid. We are voices of truth in the earth. And we will not be quiet. We will not be quiet. We disciple. We are salt. We preserve. We give savor. We are the salt of the earth. We are light in darkness. We are the city on a hill. We are called a nation that is a city on a hill and a light to the nations. And though that is on delay and pause, it is not dead. It will rise up in this hour and we will once again find our place and our destiny as lights, a city on a hill, and the gospel will go forth from these shores to the ends of the earth. And I'm shouting that from the cave today. Yeah! It's just as David was in that cave after he had been anointed and called the king and the misfits came to him. He had to write those psalms I told you last night and say, from a dark cave by candlelight, the Lord is my light and my salvation. And I say in the midst of a dark America right now, the Lord is our light and our salvation. Whom shall we fear?
I may get saved today. 